All right, everybody, welcome back to the Daily Close. It's another week, another week full of crazy good projects. Um, I know we all had a big dump recently, but there's a lot of projects that are recovering now, and we'd like to show you guys a few of them. But, you know, as we get into this, as always, um, albeit this uh, plethora of buying opportunities and money-making opportunities, this is still never going to be financial advice. So do your own research, uh, do your own due diligence. Uh, also, you know, if you can like and subscribe our channel, it helps with the algorithm. It picks us up more so we can get noticed from our people, deliver our message. If you hit that bell notification, you can be one of the first people to see our next videos. Maybe you can be the first one to make a comment. First ones who make a comment usually get comments first. So just putting it out there. But how's everyone else doing? We've got KNX QTR here. We've got Gojo. How are you boys doing? Good, bad, good. Dude. Not bad. Not bad. I think across the board, we're all happy to be here. So um, without further ado, let me just jump into my project. Um, and you know, I'll be talking about ARC. And I'm going to show you guys exactly why I think it's going to be a stellar project for your attention. But let me just get my screen here. All right, here we go. Everyone can see my screen? Yep. Yeah, that's perfect. All right. Actually, maybe I can just go over to the main page here. But, you know, oh. The ARC is a very interesting project, and I think it would be the best way if I were to start from the top. Um, as you guys, you know, all of us being in the space for a long time know, um, there's quite a few, pro a few problems that these kind of projects are trying to fix. You know, back when Satoshi Nakamoto you know, got blockchain out in 2008, uh, decentralized technologies for consensus mechanisms, identity, data structures, crypto economic designs, smart contracts, that was that proliferated the entire space that we now see. However, uh, there's a big issue. It, and I think I would term it as the adoption of blockchain technology for individuals, businesses, uh, especially government, uh, which is, tends to be quite low. And I believe it to be um, the major impediment to this is a lack of understanding, maybe trust in the space, and uh, especially expertise in this kind of technology. So, and as you and all of us might figure, some of the biggest problems that a lot of these projects are trying to handle now, scalability, security, decentralization, and most recently now, uh, interoperability, uh, which is gonna be a key word for the rest of this, and sustainability, which came to the forefront once uh, Elon Musk jumped off the bandwagon of, uh, of Bitcoin. So, you know, that's the problem we know is now. What ARC is and what it does to solve, you know, ARC, Think of it as a, it is a cryptocurrency and as a blockchain based development platform. Um, you can probably see it on here. You know, it, I would even term this also as a plug and play solution um, for easier access to the technology stack. You know, this using through, you know, the R core um, and many of the, you know, the smart bridge, which I'll be talking about later on as well, is a big component of this uh, space or this uh, project. But it's also an agnostic, uh, protocol agnostic web that inter interconnects various chains for more scalability, decentralization, and you know, much more security and sustainability that we all crave these days. So um, for those of you um, with this platform, uh, it's one of its core components, the interop interoperability piece um, has two main mechanics, which is the protocol specific smart bridge. So the entire is ARC smart bridge technology, protocol specific smart bridge. This is communicate, this represents communication between various chains using the ARC core technology that we saw talking about here. <clears throat> and then it, uh, it operates on the ARC ecosystem uh, as a network of bridge chains. Second is the protocol agnostic smart bridge. And this is communication between blockchains for dissing different consensus mechanisms, that's the word, tokens and protocols, uh, for example, Bitcoin and others. So ARC is also working to reinvent um, smart, smart contracts through its ARC logic. And it also, it, you know, ARC ecosystem I mentioned before, is meant to grow the international community of developers and of operators, blockchains, businesses and enthusiasts who are interested in this disruptive technology. All right. So, you know, you know, we're talking about uh, ARC Core v3. That is actually the recent development, um, the recent update for its core product. 
Um, you know, this core product, uh, you know, it's a, it's a major milestone for the platform. I think I should want to find a key piece here, but yeah, while core V2 provided initial push towards fully modular, um, some elements of core versions were still intertwined to the point of small modifications in one area would have large unintended impacts on other. V3 just um, improves the entire uh, ecosystem altogether, okay? Uh, I'm gonna talk about some other key core aspects about why this is an interesting project, but if I take it back to our coin gecko here, um, you can see that the market cap's around 269 million. Um, circling supply sits around 159 um, million as well. And you, know, you can see the total supply is infinite. Uh, I will say that, you know, ARC, so it does have an infinite supply because there is, you know, so in their 51 forged delegate slots uh, where they can process transactions in eight second block times, each forged block creates two arc, and this just runs in perpetuity. And that's why the total supply is going to be infinite. However, you know, participating in this chain, you know, you get rewarded uh, for participating, you know, staking your, your arc. Um, and also, you know, one arc is one vote. So that keeps that decentralized um, aspect within the space. Um, and people can vote and help make decisions. Um, I would say, at least for the price, you can see down here, Actually, I'll, I'll actually bring that up into another slide uh, later on. I can talk about uh, the price action as well. But let me just jump into why I think it is a solid project. It's come up with two different, um, different projects uh, within its space, one of them being Market Square IO. And this you know, interoperability of the platform connected with different blockchains so you can seamlessly make transactions different, across different chains is a key component of this system. And Market Square takes it to more of the user level, like you and me. Um, you know what it does is Market Square is a decentralized space for curated vote. Let's actually just bring it over here. Okay, here. Actually, I'll bring it out to the other page. So this is Market Square. It is a decentralized curate, decentralized space for curated videos, articles, and you can connect with your favorite blockchain powered projects and businesses. This interconnects multiple projects. It's still in its beta stage, so it's in its infancy, but the direction it's trying to go is to be a one-stop shop for you to come here uh, to find games, NFTs, other projects that you can look into. They show you know trending type of projects. You can look into different protocols that they also sponsor in here that they partner with and they get listed on here as well so that you can, you know, using their market square, you can be at the forefront of new technology coming out in the space. A big one, big signing with this is actually with uh, Axie Infinity. Um, they're also a partner um, on you know, Market Square with ARC um, and are showcased on here as well, so, as well as Urine Finance as well, Sushi Shop, uh, Curve. I mean, they are truly you know, expanding the web to incorporate all different projects in space so that we can see it. And you can you know, sign up here and uh, make your own profile and you can also actively participate in the space, which I think is very, very cool. And finally, I'd say that they also have another art product. This is called, let's see if I say it. They have Pavo, I'll find it in a second. But Pavo, it's a, it's a new brand that encompasses their suite of financial tools for a multi-asset support. And this color is like, you know, wallet, uh, integrations with other financial assets. You can be able to manage your money uh, through on different chains, you can manage uh, your money in one spot as well. You know, this open source project with open source SDK is makes it easy for developers to implement multiple assets uh, into their products and services as well. You know, both of these projects, I think, empower people to not only take control of um, their assets, but also to be more involved in the space, which is a key, key goal of this entire project. Yeah, just at least list it off. I mean, the list is endless, to be honest. Um, you know, there's many other projects that you can look at. Um, I think they're actually um, something worth your attention. They're always developing. They have a very solid set of developers behind them, coming up with new innovations to keep staying in the forefront of the space. I mean, if I were going to bet on any project from a pure fundamental perspective, you know, this is the kind of project that actually in the core mission is to change 
our relationship with um, uh, blockchain technology. One of their key things, because you, know, you might say they have a lot of the, uh, competitors out in the space, their key phrase is, you know, they have no competitors, just future partners, because they're trying to connect everybody all together in one. And I think if there's any project you should look into that wants to combine and bring everyone together, rather than just stand alone and try to compete themselves, this is one hell of a project to, um, to bet on. And that's why I got my money on it. So that's my bit, but I'm gonna turn it over to uh, you, K uh, KXQTR. Uh, what do you got for us today? Mm. Oh, cool. Thank you. Um, so the project I'm going to be covering is uh, is Solana. It's a monster project. <laughs> Solana. So, yeah, I mean, it's it's gotten a lot of hype and a lot of attention recently. Um, if you're new to crypto and you haven't heard of Solana, um, you're not going to make it. I'm just kidding. Um, it's a uh, it's one of the biggest L1 competitors in the space. Um, it's, it does what Ethereum does, but faster and, and quicker and essentially more efficiently. Um, so yeah, I mean, taking a look at the price right now, I think it's dipped a little bit. If I just refresh the page here, um, it's about $199. And it's had a massive run up recently in terms of, in terms of price itself. Um, and this is probably due to a, a number of things. So you can see here, just a month ago, it was like, it was 30, 37, let's, let's call it $40. Um, now it's, uh, it's $200. So that's a, it's a nice 5X uh, in a month, nice 5X. Um, it is a fairly big project. Uh, the market cap has grown significantly actually since I, I last um, saw it and is now, I believe it's sixth, sixth biggest um, with a 58 million market cap. Um, and, and the reason why it's, it's gained so much attention is because number one, it's backed by the one and only SBF, Sam Bankman Fried, who is um, obviously the, the CEO of, um, of FTX, the FTX exchange. And um, if, you're, if you're not aware, there's, um, there's a phenomenon that, that goes around that's called um, Solana Summer. <laughs> and uh, it truly has been the case this summer as well with Solana. And you know a lot of projects on Solana um, like Radium, for example, um, Serum, all gaining a lot of traction and um, having a massive boost in, in, in price. So if we go to the actual site itself, you can see, sorry, it's just been a little bit slow. Um, the, the first thing you see is powerful for developers, fast for everyone. And I think it, it really does encompass this. So um, you can see these, these figures change, um, I think every, every minute or so, but there's 1,478 live transactions per second, which is super quick. Um, I think Ethereum is something like 16 yeah. <laughs> at the moment. Um, average cost per transaction is less than a cent, much less than a cent, a fraction of a cent. And if you compare that to Ethereum right now, Ethereum's it probably costs you about 20 to $30 minimum to transact. So you can see there's a massive price difference. It's much, much cheaper to actually um, transact on, on Solana. And that's one of the reasons it's, it's gotten a lot of attention as well. Um, NFTs, you know, something that we've talked about before um, on Ethereum have been massive. And this is transitioned now over to the Solana blockchain. So, um, so um, NFT projects in Solana are launching. They're doing 100Xs, 1,000Xs. Um, a lot of, I guess, new people getting involved because, you know, spending hundreds of dollars on Ethereum gas fees and transactions is just not what most of us can afford. So yeah, um, that's another reason why a lot of people have moved over to, to Solana as well. Um, it is, it's got a lot of, I mean, in recent times, I'm talking about the, the last couple of months, there's been a lot of people and a lot of projects actually building on this Solana blockchain. Um, and you can tell, you know, there's some big names here, you know, Audius is here. Um, Badger, you've got Mango Finance, which is pretty big. Um, it is a different blockchain, so you will need to set up your own wallet, a different wallet to actually get on Solana, but it's, it's very, very simple. Um, and it's very, very easy to transact on, let's say. Um, so definitely recommend it if you're new to the, new to the space. Um, just download one of the wallets. I think um, one that I used before was Soleil, that's S-O-L-L-E-T. 
and um, away you go. Yeah. Um, and then another thing I wanted to point out is we have Suzu here, um, who is the CEO of Three Arrows Capital, a legend in the space. If you're not following, following him on Twitter, please do so now. <laughs> it's good for your health. With the um, so in, he, he, and he writes here, in mid-2017, young equity, equity traders left my firm to invest in Ethereum projects. In mid-2021, a young algo trader left my firm to build on Solana. And then he goes on to comment underneath, never bet against youth. Um, so, you know, I, I have to agree with him. I think, you know, sometimes we underestimate what the younger generation can do. Um, you know, I'm, I'm the same. If I, if I see someone who's, who's 18, 19, trying to give me advice about the crypto space, even though they've been in the, the space longer than me, I'm just like, you know, get out of here kind of thing. But um, it's true, you know, the youth, know where it's at the youth the younger the younger people um are the ones to start new trends and so i i think it's it's not wise to bet against youth um and obviously if, if suzu is saying this then um you know you, you can bet your eyes that a lot of people have seen this as well um and then lastly the the market as um crypto pleb mentioned earlier has taken a little bit of a, a retracement um over the past couple of days um, and having said that, Solana has literally not even been affected. Um, if I, let me bring up this real quick. Uh, if I go into my chart here and I go to Solana, if I go on the daily, the, the only thing I can say is, is what dump? That's literally straight up. Um, you know, you have these wicks here, which was probably what where the dump was, but then eventually closed on new all-time highs. I mean, this thing is just a monster. It it's an absolute monster. It just keeps climbing. And if you compare that very quickly with the with the Bitcoin chart, you can see it's just um, day and night. It's, you know, it's it's completely different. So, Solana is something to keep your eye on. Bear in mind, it has pumped a lot. What I would do is look into. Um, different projects launching on the Solana blockchain, things like Radium, things like Serum, um, uh, projects that are actually building using the Solana blockchain as opposed to Solana itself. Um, and I think that's where the money is to be made. So um, keep your eyes on Solana. I think it's it's still not topped out um, in this market cycle. I think we still see another run, maybe up to um, $300, $400, who knows. But um, if you want to make those big gains, look into projects on the Solana blockchain that um, are being built right now and there's, there's active developers on there. That's it from me. That's what I'm talking about. That's a, that's a beautiful chart, look at that market structure. Sick. Wish all my assets look like that right now, but they will. <laughs> but uh, what about you, Gojo? What do you got for us today? Um. I might, I might have to say that I don't have as exciting of a project as the both of you. Too um, modest, considering my friend. that what I want to talk to you guys. What's that? Too modest, my friend. Too modest. Oh, too the modest. I don't know about that. Uh, we'll see when you, uh, when you look at what I'm here to talk about, which is uh, Link. Hold on, let me just pull up my screen. You Link Warriors, baby. Screeners. Link Warriors. Make hey this man, uh, this is an oldie but goodie, oldie but goodie. Um, before I talk about Chainlink, I am, I'm mindful that maybe some of us watching this isn't aware of, maybe wasn't even investing uh, in the time the Chainlink came out because this is certainly not a new project. Um, if we're talking at blue chip, this is as blue chip as you can get maybe outside of Bitcoin and Ethereum. A lot of people say these three are some of the most foundational uh, projects when it comes to blockchain development. Um, to, to quickly summarize what Chainlink is, um, essentially it's an oracle. And if you can think of an oracle as a bridge between the blockchain um, ecosystem, as well as or linking that to external data, Chainlink does that. So blockchain, as we know, is really good at basically providing a decentralized secure ledger 
But what it's not good at is it's not very good at taking information outside of the blockchain or anything off chain that can influence markets. Um, that's that includes things like currencies. Um, that includes things like weather news or even sports uh, scores. It's not very good at integrating that kind of information. And so what Chainlink aims to do is provide that input from that external or everything off chain um, into this uh, blockchain network through smart contracts. Now, I think the reason why Chainlink or other projects like this, um, when it comes to oracles, there's certainly not the only one out there. Um, there are projects like uh, Band, we have Dia, we have uh, Teller, we have API3. Um, the reason why there's a lot of uh, movement and a lot of action within the uh, Oracle space was actually initially because of DeFi. Um, these decentralized apps built on smart contracts needed to pull this real world information to feed into smart contracts and they can't access that independently without these oracles. So that's why it's been a very ne necessary tool or a necessary part of um, the ecosystem. Now, Chainlink could be considered uh, the OG, if not one of the OGs uh, in the space. Uh, I think the, the white paper was published in 2017. So it does feel like quite a long time. But in April 2021, there was a recent update where we saw some really, I would say, kind of um, optimistic uh, views when it comes to what Chainlink is here to do. So I, I just want to go through and talk about um, some price action first, because with the dump that you know, both KNX QTR and Crypto Club were talking about, uh, Chainlink was affected. Uh, it was quite a a good time a couple of days ago when when we looked like we were trying to shoot for 38. Um, and I think that would have been a really bullish movement for us, but we ended up closing just over 37, I think, before eventually heading back down. Um, right now we're sitting at $27. So definitely affected by this dump. And I guess it makes sense because Chainlink is a project that is very closely linked to a lot of other um, blockchain projects. Um, it makes sense that it's affected in this way. But if I were to look more closely at what's been happening as a whole, um, Chainlink isn't the project that you would think of if you're looking or if you're thinking about you know, massive gains. And so you might be thinking, then why are we talking about this if we're here to make money? And why are you sharing a project that's not designed for massive gains? Um, and the reason for that is because I would say that Chainlink is relatively stable. Volatile, but stable. And I want to explain what that means. Um, if we're looking at 2018, or if we're looking at any project for that matter, from 2018 that existed and still exists today, there are very few projects that you can say back then. Uh, in 2018, I think... We peaked at zero point, um, I believe it was four or five. Um, and then just recently, um, earlier this year, we went all the way up to $48. So that's about uh, a 1,000 or a 1,000 percent gain. And there are not many projects that have lasted this long and have also shown relatively consistent increases. And the reason for that, I think, is because of how important oracles or how important a role of an oracle plays when it comes to overall um, the decentralization of specifically the internet. Um, there's a really interesting uh, actually article written by this guy. I don't know who Stephen Tuttle is, but I think he raised some pretty interesting points. Um, to think about Chainlink, uh, I think it's important to think about what Ethereum is aiming to do. And, Ethereum is aiming to decentralize the internet. But the problems that it faces, the three biggest problems that it faces is it's not scalable. Um, it needs access to real world data, which it struggles to get. And it also can't execute a lot of heavy transactions. So Chainlink's growth is actually in many ways linked to the recent growth that we see within the Ethereum space because it solves a lot of the problems that Ethereum uh, fails to overcome on its own. Um, and what, what are those things that it solves? Well, with Chainlink 2.0, 
again, this was in April of this year when this um, new updated white paper came out. Um, there are a couple of things that it aims to do. And this, this diagram is actually really interesting to me because if you're looking at this center portion, this is what we would look at as the blockchain and all the projects that exist there. Chainlink sits on the outside. And what it does is it collects and then it distributes and allows for the use of this external information within our on-chain projects. Now, the other thing that it aims to do, so one problem that this would solve would actually be, I think number two here is it requires not just Ethereum, but a lot of um, projects require real world data. But the other thing that it does to help in, I think the problem of scalability is it's allowing or it will aim to, what it says here is through its hybrid smart contracts, allow for more scalability by linking code to the decentralized Oracle network. So instead of having all of those transactions um, and smart contracts, as we call it, these hybrid smart contracts will be able to shift that data storage away from the layer one blockchains onto um, itself. Which, is, which can improve and solve a lot of these problems that we face. So I hope that you know, by, by talking about this, you, you start to see the importance of oracles, specifically the importance of Chainlink being one of the most developed oracles um, in the space. Now, the problem here is with Link, um, I think we all suffer with this. I myself, um, I, I'm sure we can all admit to this. We all suffer from recency bias when it comes to the crypto space it's always shiny new toy syndrome. Whatever has come most recently is always to be seen as, as better or more innovative. Um, but, and because of that, I guess the lack of popularity with Link um, can be attributed to that. It doesn't have the same five to 10X potential that newer projects have with the short term. But if we're just looking at the utility that this project brings, it's almost a no brainer that it's going to last and be here for the long term. What we've also seen is generally link stands the test of two things. Firstly, when BTC doesn't do well, uh, link tends to do decent. Um, and also whenever we're in a bull market, I think it's quite important to, to see the, the kind of price action that can be observed with link because it performs well throughout the cycle, not just during the bull market. So there's speculation uh, everywhere that within this current market cycle, we might get to the $100 mark, which if that were the case, um, if you hold link, I know this is a comfy hold for a lot of the more long-term investors in the space, um, you would be rewarded for um, you know, catching this relatively early. I, I do want to also talk slightly about what we might be looking for in the short term. So if you were to ask me, um, is now a good time to invest in link? Um, I would say, again, because this isn't financial advice, I can only share my opinion. I would say it's a mixed bag. Um, certainly, we're in a good space. I think we're, we have a decent entry. I know this chart here is a little bit outdated because right now we're sitting at about uh, 26, 27 right now. I would say it's a decent entry, especially if we're looking to or if we're expecting to close at 100 um, by the end of this market cycle. The other thing is I would not say you should be going into this project if you're looking to make money quickly. And I'm talking about within the next one or two months. Um, if you have some money, uh, if you have some funds that you can put in here um, and hold for the long term, certainly this would be a project to look at because I do believe that it's here to stay. Um, if I just look at Twitter, here's the thing about Link. If you go on Twitter, there are a lot more uh, optimistic views uh, about how this project is going to turn out, albeit it isn't as bullish as things like Soul, um, things maybe even like Arc, but you will see that there's a lot of faith that it will return to its old glory days. Um, even if we're looking at this accumulation phase comparison from, uh, I think this was the beginning of 2020, um, the expectation here, again, if we're looking at this, is to get up. Um, I think this is a Chainlink bit BTC, but if we're looking at USD, um, this is about, I would say this is about 60, 70 up at the top here. So overall, um, I would say the utility is undeniable for this project. 
uh, it is a, nece a necessity if we're looking at even something like Ethereum um, continuing to expand. We've already seen it make some pretty strong moves recently. So with that, um, and with the kind of problems that Link solves within the entire blockchain ecosystem, there's no doubt that we're going to see some larger moves, um, if not in the midterm, uh, but certainly down the line a couple of years from now. So I will close there. Thank you very much. That's what's up. Chainlink is a solid project. And Gojo here made some very salient points. I'd say, yeah, it's like, it's basically the, like plumbing, the utilities, like utility plumbing, bringing the information into the blockchain. And then you'll see like in the, the previous video, talked about the graph, same thing, bringing the, the information out the blockchain. And then you see all these uh, type of projects working together in tandem and what makes this space so brilliant. But um, no, that's, that's great projects here. Uh, I think well. I think Link as well. I mean, people really underestimate how integrated Link is with almost absolutely every single project. Like if you look at the market share that they have as an Oracle in the blockchain space, it's insane. Like I think the second biggest one is like Band Protocol. It's not even close. Um, they they have their hands in. Uh, I, I just like as as Gojo said, you know, it's it's undeniable. Um, you know that it's that's definitely necessary for the the crypto space, um, and if you if you take into account the price and the actual market, um, the market cap of the of Link, it's so undervalued. Um, Super undervalued. So so undervalued. Um, I think that in terms of price, um, yeah, I, I definitely agree. It is more of a steady hold. Um, it it has performed well across the um across the three years it's been um, available to trade. Um, but I, I really think that it has the potential to like 10x by the end of the, the bull market. Um, I think where it is right now, it's super undervalued. Um, when things start running, when we get Oracle season again, you'll see things like Band Protocol, API3, um, and Blink leading the way for sure. Um, and I don't think $200 is out of the question here. Um, you know, not, not financial advice, but um, <laughs> just a little bit of opium for you all. And you heard um, here. <laughs> you I mean, it funny here. story as well. I was trading back in 2017. I was, uh, I held a little bit of link. I, I bought, I think it was around seven cents. Um, Ouch. Yeah. Uh, I, I held some stuff in my portfolio. Link, unfortunately, wasn't one of them um, throughout the whole 2018, 2019 bear market. And uh, yeah, came back to see link was around, what, $10 at the time. But now I mean, we're here. And, and now we're here. But, you know, you, you win some, you lose some. Mm. Link, great project. Yes, all solid projects here. It's very good. Um, this wraps up another week on the daily close here. Excellent projects. We come back every week with new projects that we think are going to be, you know, the next week's you know, hitters. Uh, ones that can, you know, make you some good returns, but not just that. Some projects that are actually fundamentally good and worth your attention. As always, this is never financial advice, so you know, do your due do, do diligence. But um, just on a parting note, you know, if you love what we do, you know, please hit that like. If you want to see more of us, please give us a follow. And if you want to be one of the first people to comment, because we'll get back to you, hit that bell notification, and uh, we'll be right there for you. Also, let us know um, if you want no. to review any projects. My man, my man. Exactly. Any projects, we'll look at it. It looks good. We'll review it. We'll even give you a shout out. So um, that's it for this week, boys. So we'll see you next week on the Daily Close. Thank you. And may the pump be with you. May the pump always be with you. <laughs>